we're going to now continue to build up our toolbox of how to test convergence of series. So far, we have the divergence test that, you know, nth term test, the integral test, the P series test. Now we're going to add a class of tests to our toolbox, and they're called the comparison tests. This allows us to take a look at our mystery series, which I'll refer to them in this video, in this set of videos, and try to see if it looks familiar against a class of known series that we know the behavior of. Now, in this video, we're going to go ahead and just discuss the two theorems that we'll use, the direct comparison test and the limit comparison test. We'll see some very basic examples, but then in the second video, we're going to work out all of the exercises. And so let's just jump right into it. So our first theorem is this direct comparison test. Some books like ours, the OpenStax textbook, some books will just call it the comparison test. But I'm going to re refer to this as a direct comparison test. And I'll also abbreviate this as DCT for direct comparison test, okay? Now, this one's pretty easy to understand, okay? So let's say we have our two sequences, AN and BN, and the idea here is that they are both positive, okay? They are both positive, okay? Now, if I can order them so that one sequence, let's say B, the BN sequence, is bigger than the AN sequence, then I can get the following results. If I know that the sum of the BNs, okay, is convergent, so we'll also say that the BNs are sum summable, if the sum of the BNs is convergent, the bigger one, then the smaller one, the sum of the ANs, is also convergent, okay? So let's look at this, okay? So the, that result says if this is convergent, okay, then the smaller is convergent. So the idea here is that we're controlling the behavior of this unknown series summing the ANs. We're controlling that behavior by something that we know, the BNs. Okay, and if we can compare them so that the ANs are always smaller than or equal to the BNs, well, the BNs control the show here. If we know that the BNs are well-behaved, the ANs will be well-behaved. Now, the other direction, which is equivalent, okay, but you have to be careful with the implication here. The other direction has the following. We're still going to order them AN and BN so that AN is smaller. AN is now bigger, okay? Now, here, if the smaller diverges, okay, so this is the smaller in this case, then the bigger one diverges. Okay, here note that this version of the theorem has them ordered in the uh, opposite direction where the AN is now the bigger series and that's the mystery one. If we can bound it from below by something that blows up, then the bigger one will also blow up. So how does this really work out? Well, you have to first understand that you have to like find something to compare it to and that's where we have to like use these inequalities, okay? For example, okay, let's go ahead and think about some of these inequalities, okay? And qualities to think about, we have that sine of x, well, sine of n, rather, in a, in a discrete case, the sine of n is always less than or equal to 1. Cosine of n is less than or equal to 1. Those are very useful inequalities. And then we also have the fact that if I have a is less than b, then that tells me that 1 over a is, in fact, bigger than 1 over b. Remember, taking reciprocals, flips the direction of the inequality. Okay, so how does this really work out? Well, let's think about a quick example here, okay? Just so that you can see this in action before we go into the exercises in the second video, okay? If I have this mystery sum, say 1 over n squared plus 6, okay, if I have that sequence, well, notice that I can make the denominators bigger by dropping the six off, okay? If that six wasn't there, I know that's one over n squared. And we know from the P-series test that one over n squared is a convergent sum, okay? But I can go ahead and make this estimation here. I can just replace that by one over n squared, okay, because of the above, as n squared plus six is smaller than n squared, sorry, is bigger than n squared, okay? And then taking reciprocals, Okay, flips the direction of the inequality. Okay. 
And so as we know that this guy here is convergent, we know that the mystery sum, 1 over n squared plus 6, is also convergent. And that is behind my head. Okay. So the idea here is that you make sure that everything stays on the screen. But then you also need to make sure that you can use these inequalities well. So the direct comparison test may be a little hard at times to use. And that's why we also have the so-called limit comparison test. Now, the cool thing about the limit comparison test, which I'll abbreviate here as LCT, okay? The cool thing about the limit comparison test is that you don't even need an ordering. You still need that these sequences are all positive. They have positive terms, okay? But you don't need to care about an ordering. So let's see what this says, okay? If I take the limit of their, the quotient of this, these two things as a sequence, if I take the limit of the quotient, an over bn, and that limit is a finite number l that is not zero, okay? That's the key thing here, okay? A finite number l that is not zero, then the two sums behave the same. That is, both the sums an and bn are both convergent or divergent. So if you know the behavior of one, you get the behavior of the other for free. So if you know, say, one of these converges, the other one has to converge if the limit is finite. Now, if the case happens where that limit is zero, and you know that the bn that you have selected, okay, maybe that's your mystery series, or maybe that's your reference series, and that's usually the case for this version of the theorem here in uh, statement two, if you know that the bn's are summable, if the bn's, the sum of the bn's is convergent, then so too that the sum of the an's is also convergent, provided that the limit of the ratio is zero. Okay, that bn will cause the ratio to drive down to zero in limits. And so we can say that the an's are also summable as well. Now, finally, we have the, uh, this last statement here. If this ratio ends up having a limit of infinity and the limit and the BNs are divergent as a series, then the ANs are also divergent. Okay. And the trick here for the limit comparison tests, okay, the idea you want to compare the dominant terms. The idea is you want to compare dominant terms. Now, what does that really mean? Well, let's take a look at a very quick example just before going to the exercises in the next video. Okay. If I have, for example, if I want to look at, uh, say, 1 over, well, let's take the one from before, 1 over n squared plus 6. Well, I know 1 over n squared plus 6 almost looks like 1 over n squared. Okay. So we have 1 over n squared plus 6 and 1 over n squared. If that 6 wasn't there, okay, the 6 doesn't really contribute much in limits, so we can just drop it, and we still get something that behaves more or less the same, something that's asymptotic. Okay? Now, what we're going to do, we're going to set, say, our reference series. We're going to call this our BN. That's our reference series. Or this is our mystery series, AN. This is the mystery series. And we don't know how this guy behaves. Now, we showed that above that this guy, this an here that I've selected, is summable, okay? As a sum, that's convergent, okay? But how do we do this? So we go ahead and build our limits here. So the limit here, as n goes to infinity of an over bn, okay? Now, just by using some fraction rules here, okay? An is 1 over n squared plus 6. bn is 1 over n squared. But I can go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal, so that's n squared. And if you remember from calculus one, okay, just how to take these kinds of limits with rational functions, equal heavy means that you divide out the leading coefficients. That's just one. But we know that the bn's form a convergent series. This is convergent. And so conclude, we can conclude that this is also convergent. Okay, so that's how these theorems work, okay? It's gonna take a little bit of comfort to get used to using these theorems. And most of the time, I'll suggest to use the limit comparison test because you don't have to think about an ordering and the way that these inequalities go, but sometimes you can get away with just using a direct comparison test. Most of the time you can use both of these theorems, 
but the LCT is usually going to be the way to go. So all that to say, well, how are we going to use this? Well, we'll see that in the next video, okay? We're going to see some examples of how to determine the conversions of certain series, if they do converge or not, using these comparison tests, be it by limit comparison tests or direct comparison tests, whichever one feels most convenient. And so with those exercises in the background there, okay, I'll let you think about them. I'll see you in the next one.